Place six cups of water in a large stock pot. Bring the water to a full boil over medium high heat. Thoroughly peel and thinly slice one medium jicama or a turnip or any firm vegetable of your choice. Place the peeled and sliced jicama or turnip into your boiling water. Boil for about 25 minutes or until the jicama or turnip has softened. Now jicama never gets completely soft, so don't expect it to have the same texture as a potato, but it should get soft enough to be fork tender. After 25 minutes, drain the water from the jicama and the turnip, place the softened jicama or turnip into a large food processor, add salt, pepper, and the seasonings of your choice according to your personal taste, add one ounce of cream cheese, Add a half cup of softened butter. Blend on low for about 30 seconds or so or just until the potato substitute is your desired consistency. Think of whatever consistency you like your mashed potatoes to be. If the mixture seems too thick, you can blend in one to two tablespoons of coconut milk or the keto milk of your choice until the mashed potato substitute is your desired consistency. Once you have it your desired consistency, you can serve this immediately. Place a half cup of water and two tablespoons of butter in a medium saucepan over medium heat. Bring the water to a full boil. Stir in one and a half cups of keto dried bread cubes until the bread cubes are completely moist. Add three fourth teaspoon of chicken bouillon granules, three fourths teaspoon of dry oregano, three fourths teaspoon of garlic powder, one fourth teaspoon of pepper, 1 4th teaspoon of dry sage, 1 4th teaspoon of dry thyme, and 1 4th teaspoon of onion powder. Stir everything together until everything is fully combined. Cover the pan with a lid and remove it from the heat. Let the stuffing sit for about 5 minutes or so or until all of the liquid is completely absorbed. Once it's absorbed, use a fork and fluff the stuffing up just a little bit. Then you can serve this immediately. Place 14 and a half ounces of cooked green beans or canned green beans that have been completely drained into a medium saucepan over medium heat. Heat for about three to five minutes or just until the green beans are hot. Stir in one tablespoon of butter and one ounce of cream cheese. Keep stirring until the butter and the cream cheese are fully melted. Turn off the heat and stir in one fourth teaspoon of salt 1 4th teaspoon of pepper, and a half teaspoon of onion powder until everything is fully combined. Transfer the mixture to a one and a half quart casserole dish. Sprinkle your desired amount of chopped cooked ham or bacon over the top of the casserole. Then top the ham with some shredded cheese of your choice. And if you want to, you can add some sliced cooked mushrooms, that's up to you, over the top of the casserole. Bake in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 5 minutes or just until the cheese is completely melted. Sprinkle about a fourth cup of dry keto breadcrumbs or crushed pork rinds over the top of the casserole. Then bake for another 5 minutes or until the top is toasted and heated through. Once the casserole is done cooking, remove it from the oven and serve it immediately. In a large mixing bowl, sift together 3 fourths cup of coconut flour, 2 tablespoons of psyllium husk powder, a fourth cup of the granulated sweetener of your choice, 1 tablespoon of baking powder, and a half teaspoon of salt until there are no lumps. Add 3 large room temperature eggs, a fourth cup of butter that's been melted and cooled, a half teaspoon of pineapple extract, or you can adjust this more or less according to your taste, and a half cup of hot water. Make sure it is hot so it can soften the psyllium husk powder. Beat on medium for about one minute or so, or until everything is fully combined and you have a smooth dough. Allow the dough to sit for about five to 10 minutes so it can absorb all the extra moisture. After five to 10 minutes, if it still seems like the dough is thin, you can add a little bit more coconut flour. It should be thick enough so that you can scoop it out and shape it into balls. 
Scoop the dough out a fourth cup at a time and roll each scoop into smooth, tight balls. Place the dough balls side by side into a lightly greased 8.5 by 4.5 inch casserole dish. If you don't have 8.5 by 4.5, you can use a 9 by 5 loaf pan. That'll work just fine. Brush the top of the rolls with some egg wash. If you don't know what egg wash is, it's one egg plus one tablespoon of water whisked together until it's fully combined. Just brush it over the top. This is just going to help the tops brown a bit. Bake in a preheated oven at 375 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes or until the rolls are golden and a tester comes out clean. Once the rolls are done baking, remove them from the oven. Allow them to cool in the pan for at least 30 minutes or until they are firm. Once the rolls are firm, remove them from your casserole dish, place them on a wire rack, and allow them to cool completely before you separate the rolls and slice them. Once they are cooled completely, separate the rolls, and if you want to, you can slice them and fill them with some butter or filling of your choice. If you do want them to be warm, you can pop them back in the microwave for a few seconds just until they're warm before you add any butter or any filling. Eat and enjoy!